كل تجي إسلام لوكس كواليتي كم من فئة كليلة غلبت فئة كثيرة بإذن الله. How many times have you seen a small party overcome a large party بإذن الله with the permission of Allah the Quran says. Did you not look at the people of Badr? Look at the take example from the people of Badr. These were people 316 of 300 307 in number. Yeah, 313 in number. How many of them? was equipped us an extreme few of them how many camels and horses among them a few some of them armed with batons some of them sharing the sword and how many of the Quraysh were there how many of the Makkans were there 1000 equipped and armed to their teeth 300 were just their cavalry and what what did they have that the Makkans didn't they had love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when you have Allah and the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, you need not, you do not need anything else. They are enough for you. Allah and His Prophet are enough for you. And when you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then you'll see your problems going away. The reason why we have so many problems in our society, in our families, in our lives, is because we have turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the path that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tread. We have turned away from it. And you see that clearly, you see, look outside. Look outside on your streets, whether it be in Birmingham, whether it be in London, Manchester, anywhere else. And you'll see, you'll see the difference, the stark contrast. According in, in terms of those people and the people that existed in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's time, each and every heart was attached to the masjid. Each and every heart was attached to the Quran. Each and every foot wanted to tread the same path that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam treaded. Unfortunately, we've lost that today, and. We have turned away from that path. But Alhamdulillah, you know, so blessed, so beloved, so merciful and compassion is, compassionate is our Lord. And He gives us a chance each and every time that when you turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you turn away from the path that He has provided you with, the path that He has told you, this is the path that you must take. When you turn away from it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the opportunity to and what is that? This is why we're talking about Tawbah today. Tawbah literally, repentance, the word for repentance in Arabic is Tawbah. And Tawbah literally means to turn or to retreat. So when we, when we use repentance, when we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for He is the only one that can forgive our sins. He is the only one that can take us out of darkness and into the light. So we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why it's extremely important for us to understand. Before we make tawbah, before we repent, to know what repentance is, what it means to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That doesn't just mean, you know, after every salah that you read, and a few of them they may be, and you say, oh Allah forgive my sins and khayat, amin, you know, leave the masjid and continue with your life as it was. That's not repentance. And inshallah, you know the Quran mentions the repentance in various forms 66 times in the Quran. 66 times in the Quran repentance is mentioned. You know the ayat that refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wrath? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's adab? They are few in comparison to the ayat that mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and His compassion. SubhanAllah, that's how merciful and compassionate our Lord is. Say subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. You know, just because Imam Sahib isn't here, it doesn't mean that we won't continue the culture. Say subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. You know, he may be, you know, Imam Sahib, whenever he's, whenever I'm with him, he always talks about, uh, you know, when he says, say subhanAllah, it's always, you know, say subhanAllah, and we're gonna, that's your fuel. 
And where are we taking it? He always ranges. We're taking it to Medina. Alhamdulillah, today Imam Saab is in Medina. Subhanallah. He is in Medina. And we're saying, Subhanallah, that perhaps our du'as may reach Medina. Subhanallah. Perhaps through the barakah of those individuals who have gone to Medina, perhaps our salam will reach the Prophet. No doubt our salam will reach the Prophet. But will it reach? In terms of the Prophet وسلم, when he hears that this individual has given you salam, this ummati of yours has given you salam, will the Prophet وسلم, look at his a'mal and say, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, this is one of my people? That's the person that we need to be. That when we give our salam to the Prophet, وسلم, the Prophet وسلم, knows that we are following his sunnah, knows that we are following his example. Alhamdulillah, do not. You know that that uh, you know what this is a beautiful you know I'm not going to say this is a sort of an innovation to say Subhanallah Astaghfirullah you know Subhanallah saying Subhanallah is so blessed in itself that I I know individuals who I met uh, uh, one um, one brother and he had just converted to Islam and all he would say was Subhanallah Subhanallah whenever you meet him and you'd say. How are you, Sidi? How are you, brother? You say, Subhanallah. Subhanallah. You know, normally you say, Alhamdulillah. You know, all praises for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. All is well. Whenever you'd meet this individual, he would always say, Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And I thought maybe perhaps he's from the gathering of us. Perhaps, perhaps he's from this family that he accepted Islam. And many brothers do. Alhamdulillah. You, I, I was with the uh, Imam Sahib a couple of a couple of months ago. In in the prison, Alhamdulillah, three brothers accepted Islam just on that very day. Alhamdulillah. And uh, it's, this is our opportunity. You know when these people accept Islam, what do we tell them? When they accept Islam, we say to them that your sins have been wiped clean. This is why we have the word tabula rasa. <coughs> tabula rasa in, 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 uh, in Greek ter terminology, in Latin terminology means a blank slate. So you have absolutely nothing. Everything is wiped away. You're like a newborn child. And now continue with your life. Yeah? Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is constantly giving us opportunities to make that slate blank again. Each and every namaz. If we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we sincerely ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness, if we sincerely seek to repent, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every salah will clean us. Subhanallah. Every salah. But the deficiency is within us. We don't do that enough. We don't wish to repent. You know, I've met many individuals and many brothers that when you, when you talk to them, they say they've lost hope. They lose hope. They say, you know what? And some of them, whether they say it out of, you know, uh, a, a, a sense of, um, you know, humility or humbleness, or whether it's a flawed sense of humility or humbleness. When they say, you know, I sit there garden there. What hope is there for us? La taqnatu min rahmatillah. The Quran says, Do not despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how high your sins are, if your sins may reach the sky, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy far overcomes it. And if you sincerely seek repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then He will surely forgive you. Subhanallah. There is no doubt about that. He will surely forgive you. It's our job to repent. You know, there's the hadith that I just mentioned before you in my khutbah. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu says, And every son of Adam, alayhi salatu was salam, are sinners. Each and every one of you are sinners. But the best of the sinners are those who repent. Those who repent and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what it means to repent. To keep turning back to him. And when we keep turning away, so merciful is our Lord. So merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we repent. Allah forgives us. We go back to our sins. We repent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us. We go back to our sins. We repent. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us. Each and every time we sin, each and every time we seek his repentance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there. 
So this is extremely important that, you know, each and every, is there anybody here? No, first of all, let me pose the question. Out of all of you brothers here, put your hands up if you are a sinner. Put your hands up if you are a sinner. Is there anybody here, now put your hands up. Is there anybody here who is infallible? Is there anybody here who is free from sin? Can anybody say that I have never committed a sin in my life? I'm not asking you to expose your sins. I'm saying that is there anybody here who feels that they have never committed a sin and they will never commit a sin until the day they die? Is there anybody? No. Each and every one of us is a sinner. Only the Prophet and the Prophets are infallible. We are not. And the Prophet who is infallible and did not commit any sins, the Prophet says, I seek repentance a hundred times a day. Subhanallah. The man who has no sins, look at this. The individual who has no sins is seeking repentance a hundred times a day. And each and every one of us who claim ourselves, who admit ourselves that we are sinners, and each and every one of us should feel that they are where the worst of sinners. You know? We're the worst of sinners. Each and every one of us should feel that. And look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always willing to forgive us. We always sin. How many times do we seek repentance? The Prophet a hundred times a day would seek repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, you know, a few istighfar after salah, that doesn't count. We've made it into a culture. We've made it into a tradition that when we say astaghfirullah, that I, I, I seek forgiveness in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I repent. When we say that, we don't feel it. You know, we can say astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. But what does it become? Mere words on our tongues. If we don't act upon them, yeah, then our tawbah is incomplete. Our repentance is incomplete. And in this verse of the Quran, inshallah, that I, I would like to mention to you. The Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, tubu ila Allahi tawbatat nasuha. And O oh, you who believe, tubu ila Allah, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tawbatat nasuha, with a sincere repentance. A sincere repentance. Not a mere astaghfirullah and then continue with your sins. You have to be sincere in your repentance. And then what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to say? Asa rabbukum an yukaffira ankum sayyatikum wa yudhilakum jannatin tajri min tahtiha al-anhar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and perhaps, perhaps your Lord, He will yukaffira ankum sayyatikum, then He will remove from you your sins, wa yudhilakum jannatin tajri min tahtiha al-anhar. And He will admit you into the gardens beneath which rivers flow. يَوْمَ لَا يُخْزِ اللَّهُ النَّبِيَّ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does not disgrace the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those who believed, those who had iman with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And He goes on beautifully. نُورُهُمْ يَسْعَى بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَبِأَيْمَانِهِمْ and their light that proceeds from them will be imanihim and to their right. So light encompasses them. Yaqulun and then they will say, Rabbana atmim lana nurana wa qfid lana. That our Allah, our Lord, complete for us our light and forgive us. Innaka ala kulli shaykhun kadeer. Indeed, you, i.e. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are over all things able. Subhanallah, in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions something which many of our ulama, when they stand up on the pulpit, or aimma, when they stand up on the mimbar on, on, on Friday, that they, that they mention tawbat al nusuha. See, tawbat al nusuha. Oh, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, when we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should repent and say, Oh Allah, give us that tawbah which is nusuha which is sincere. So we should seek repentance and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that in itself is a blessing. You know, seeking repentance 
from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in itself a mercy. And we should always seek it. And what does that mean? The first thing when we look at repentance, and inshallah, I have, I have till about half past nine. Past nine inshallah, I'll try, to, I'll try to keep it, uh, you know, within, within the time. You know, you know, ulama, they're not really um, good at timekeeping. So khair, inshallah, today we'll, we'll try to keep it and finish before Isha. Repentance. In regard to repentance, the number one thing that we must have in our mind. The number one thing. And the first thing that we should do when we want to seek repentance from Allah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving. We have to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and we have to hope for His mercy. What does it mean to hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy? Ask Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala. And there's a very famous narration from him, although, albeit weak. And Sayyidina Amr ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala and says that I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much, I have so much fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to say that each and every individual created from Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu wasalam ila yawm al qiyamah to the day of judgment each and every individual is going to Jannah except one person then Sayyidina Amr said, I fear that that one person may be Umar ibn Khattab. I fear that that one person will be me who goes to Jahannam while everybody goes to Jannah. And he goes, on the other hand, I have so much hope in the rahmah and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to say that each and every individual created from Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu wasalam to the day of judgment is going to Jahannam except one person and I Umar ibn Khattab believe and I hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy that that one person will be me. This is the, the fine line between hope and faith. Yeah? And this is why we have to hope for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. And the verse of the Quran which talks about, you know there's many verses. ثُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ يَجِدُ اللَّهَ تَوَّابًا رَحِيمًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he who does something evil or who does something wrong or يَذْلِمْ نَفْسَهُ or he does zulm upon himself ثُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ And then he seeks repentance, he seeks forgiveness in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَجِدِ اللَّهَ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Then he, he will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kind and compassionate, kind and merciful in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, قُلْ يَا إِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الظُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say, are you telling, commanding the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say to them, يَا إِبَادِي, O oh my servants, those of you who have transgressed against their own souls, against their own selves, do not despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why should we not despair of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy? Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins. Why? Because he is the most forgiving. He is the most merciful. So no matter how high your sins are, no matter how many sins you have committed, see, that's the number one thing. People despair of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. How many brothers have you met? How many sisters have you seen? Who say, listen, we've done so much wrong in our lives. That there's no way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us. And this believing this or uttering these, these words are haram. It's haram. It's unlawful for you to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forgive your sins. You're, you're incapable of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiving your sins. Astaghfirullah. Do not say that. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will forgive you. Do not despair of His mercy. Do not think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forgive you. If your sins reach the sky, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still willing to forgive you. 
And inshallah, there's a few beautiful ahadith in regards to that, uh, in regards to forgiveness. is a famous story that we all know of and most of us have heard. What's that story? The story of that one man who had killed 99 people. You know, we've heard that story. How many of you have heard the story of the man who killed 99 people? SubhanAllah, for those of you who haven't, for those of you who haven't, there was a man who killed 99 people. And then he began to regret and he wanted to seek forgiveness. But he did not know how to seek forgiveness. He did not know to whom he should seek forgiveness. And he did not know anybody who can help him. So he went to a Christian priest or a monk. And he went to that individual and he says that I've committed 99 murders. I've killed 99 people. Is there any forgiveness for me? Will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me? Is there a chance? Is there any chance for redemption? And the Christian priest says, you've killed 99 people. How is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how is God ever going to forgive you? And he thinks to himself, well, if I've killed 99, then I might as well make it a century. <laughs> yes? I might as well make it a hundred. And he kills that individual, he kills the priest. And he completes his century. And then he begins to regret it. Then look at this. Look at Tawbah. He begins to turn. You know, Tawbah means to turn. And he keeps turning after he keeps committing sins. And he, he still wants to seek repentance. So he goes to an individual who tells him that there is a man who will help him. Yeah? That there is a man. He, this person gives him hope and tells him that, like the Quran says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins if you sincerely seek repentance. So he goes on this journey to meet this individual. And as he's on this journey, he passes away. He dies. And then the angels of Jannah and the angels of Jahannam come. And the angels of Jahannam say, listen, this person has killed 90, 90 not 99, he's just completed the century. He's killed a hundred people. Surely he's from me. He's min ahlin nar. He's from the people of the fire. And the angels of mercy, the angels of, of Jannah, they, they, they say no. But this individual, he wanted to repent. He was seeking repentance. He wanted to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was on that journey. Hence, who are ahlil Jannah. He is from the people of Jannah. And this case is taken to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders that the distances be measured. If he is more closer from the place that he went from, yeah? Then he is min ahlil, min ahlil nar. Then he is closer to the hellfire. If he was more closer to his destination, then who are in ahlil jannah? Then he is from the people of jannah. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He cuts down the journey. He cuts down the distance between him and his destination and makes that closer. Makes that closer. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always wanting to forgive us. He's always willing to forgive us. In fact, you know when we say Allah, when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, and we say afubun, that you are the most forgiving. You hibbul afwa. You love to forgive. Fa'afu anni. So forgive me. You know, this is the dua. And say that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is there a specific dua that she can make on Laylatul Qadr, on the night of power? Now what did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa say? Make this dua. Allahumma innaka afufun. Oh Allah, you're the most forgiving. You have afwa. You love to forgive. Fa'afu anni. So forgive me. Subhanallah. Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, his rahmah, encompasses everything. It encompasses everything. And whenever we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up his doors for you. When you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will open up the doors of Jannah for you. When you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will show you your place in Jannah. When you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all your sins. The second thing after believing in Allah's mercy and His forgiveness, believing that He will forgive you, 
the second thing that we must do is to pinpoint our sins. Yeah? We have to stop committing it and stop doing those things that can potentially lead to it. And what does that mean? For example, if we if we commit zina, yeah? fornication, or someone commits a, commits adultery, yeah? and he knows that the reason why he does that is because he drinks alcohol. Both of them are sins and both of them are haram. So he knows that drinking alcohol leads him to something like that. Then he has to pinpoint the source of his sin. That this is the reason why, why I'm doing what I'm doing. And then he has to stop it. And when he seeks repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has to seek repentance sincerely. And he's never ever going to go back to that sin ever again. If he does dua and he says, Oh Allah, forgive me, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an evil individual, but what can I do? So many people seek such forgiveness. What can I do? I'm weak. Khulik al insan ta'ifa. An insan has been created weak. You know? So we begin to feel that we're weak. But in terms, in contrast to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're extremely strong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy encompasses everything. He will always forgive us. He is willing to forgive us. He is looking for opportunities to forgive us. Subhanallah. Your Lord is looking for opportunities to forgive you. Look at the state amongst yourselves. Look at your families. How many of you have families who are not talking to each other? How many of you know brothers and sisters who are not talking to each other? How many of you have friends who are not talking to each other? Many of you know these individuals who are not talking to each other. Why? Because something happened and nobody was willing to forgive. Look how hard it is for that individual. These, they will make enemies with such people and they will continue this en enmity all the way until they die. Even after they die, this enmity continues through their children. Is that not true? Of course it is. It happens. You know, that's the hardest thing for a person to do. Forgive. That's the hardest thing to forgive that individual. But look at our Lord. We commit so many atrocities. We do the worst of crimes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, keep telling. Keep telling to me. Keep asking for my forgiveness and I will keep forgiving you. Such is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if there were people who did not commit any sin, if there was a poem, a nation that did not commit any sins, they were sinless, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have wiped them off the face of the earth and, and made those people who did commit sin just so that when they commit sins and they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always wanting to forgive them. This is how merciful our Lord is. This is how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So we have to pinpoint the source of it. We have to stop committing it. All those things that can lead to it. Like for example, if somebody takes drugs, which is a problem within the Muslim community, the British Muslim community taking drugs, you know, many of our brothers and sisters do that. So they have to pinpoint the source of their sin. Perhaps they smoke <coughs> cannabis or they take drugs when, 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 when they're with their friends. Yeah? And I say friends. Yeah? Those people are not your friends. They're not your friends. Those who take you away from the path of the Prophet وسلم, and towards the path of the shaitan, they're not your friends. They're not people who like you. They're not people who love you. Let me burst that bubble for you. They're not people who care about you. You know who cares about you? Those people who take you away. They're the ones that love you. Those individuals who take you off the streets and bring you to the masjid on Wednesday night to the gathering of hope. They are your friends. Not those individuals who say it's Wednesday night, it's student night, it's this night, let's go clubbing. Don't have anything to do with them people. Know who your friends are. And you have to pinpoint those individuals that this is the reason why I'm committing sins. And when you seek repentance, you have to stay away from all of that. You have to make the intention, I'm never going to go near that ever again. You know, in terms of good companionship, there's a qa'ida. Famous qa'ida that I heard from one of my shaykh in Al-Azhar. It's beautiful. And the shaykh says, Suhbat al-kiram al-akhyari al al turisu huthna dhanni bil-ashraari. 
وسحبة أسياء أشرار تورس سوء الذن بالأخيار that the suhba, the companionship of kiram and akhyar, of good, generous people, turisu huthna dhanni bil ashrar. It breeds the best of opinion about the worst of people. So when you stay in the company of good people, you're going to have a good opinion about the worst of people. What does that mean? That when somebody tells you, that this individual is evil, this individual is full of sharr, he's full of evil, he's full of deceit, he's full of wrongdoing. You're going to have husn of them. You're going to say, perhaps he's a good individual. Perhaps he prays. Perhaps he seeks repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, you're going to have the best of opinion about the worst of people when you stay in good company. And the companionship of evil and wrong people, tourism, su al-danne bil akhyar, it breeds the worst of opinion about the best of people. And how many of those people do you know? How many gatherings of those do you know? Where people tell you that the best of people are actually the worst, and they give you that. So you begin to have the worst of opinion about good people. And that's down to your companionship. So choose your friends wisely. If there's a friend who constantly brings you to the masjid, who says, Ya Akhi, <coughs> brother, come to the masjid, come to the gathering of hope. Then know that that individual is from the people who the Prophet ﷺ said they like the perfume sellers, the musk sellers. That when you go to them, when you spend time with them, you may not purchase perfume or musk from them, but just merely staying in their presence is beneficial for you. Oh, and stay away from those people about whom the Prophet ﷺ says that these are like, you know, the people, the blacksmiths who work with coal. That even if you may not indulge in that line of work, but just merely staying in their presence will have its effect on your clothes. Stay away from those individuals. Come to the masajid, attach yourselves to the masjid. Al mu'minu fil masjid ka samaki fil ma. That the mu'min, the believer in the masjid is like a fish in water. When you take that fish out of water, what happens? <coughs> it rips away and it dies. This is our state, this is how our state should be. That when we leave the masjid, our heart should always be yearning to come back. When we leave one gathering of hope after Wednesday, Isha, our heart should be yearning that we catch the next gathering and the one after and the one after. This is how we must feel. If our hearts don't feel that way, then there is a problem. Then there is a deficiency within our repentance. You brothers have a unique opportunity. You have an opportunity every single week to cry your eyes out and sincerely seek repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have a unique opportunity that every single week Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you to come, take out your time for His cause. And you know when you take out time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's cause, then He opens up His doors of mercy for you. He opens up the doors of hidayat for you. He opens up the doors of guidance for you. So come to the masjid. In, attach your hearts to the masjid and attach your hearts to good people and you will see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses every aspect of your life so to pinpoint your sin the source of your sin and make sure you don't do anything that can potentially lead to that so if there's something that can potentially lead you to committing that sin don't even go down that road don't even go down that path stay away from that path if you have sins if you have <coughs> friends or acquaintances who are committing those sins, then detach yourselves from them and attach yourselves to the people of hope. So attach yourselves to them. Attach yourselves to those who are going to take you to the path of the Prophet. And the third thing that we must do after we have believed in Allah's mercy, His forgiveness, and we have pinpointed our sin, what do we have to do? We have to seek repentance. And when we seek repentance, we have to seek it sincerely. 
and know that once we sincerely seek repentance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely forgive us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, At-ta'ibu min al-dhambi kaman la dhambala. That the ta'ib, the one who seeks repentance, the one who asks for forgiveness, kaman la dhambala. It is like as if he has no sins. As if he is completely sinless. So once you seek sincere repentance, and you don't go back to that sin again, then know that the fact that you haven't gone back to that sin again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your sin. When you don't go back to that sin again, then you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your, 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 your forgiveness. That's what we have to do. So regret, regret it. You know, don't, don't make Toba into a custom. Don't make seeking forgiveness into a custom that you do five times a day after your salah. Yeah? Don't make it into a custom. Oh, yes, Allah, oh Allah, Rabbana hatina fi dunya hasana. Oh Allah, give us hasana in this world. Oh, fi al-akhirati hasana. Give us hasana in the akhir. Waqina adab Allah. And save us from the fire of hell. You know? That's a dua that we always make. Every single day, five times a day within our salah. Even outside it. Oh Allah, give us the best in this world, the best in the akhirah. Waqina adab Allah. And save us from the fire of hell. <coughs> are these just mere words? Or are they coming from the heart? And that's the thing that we need to pinpoint. If they're mere words, then no. That's the reason why you're reading your salah five times a day and you're still committing sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْعَانِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ That indeed salah, it prohibits you, it forbids you from committing any evil and indecent acts. And yet you'll find people who are constantly praying salah. They're reading salah five times a day and yet they're committing sins. Why is that? Because there's a deficiency within their prayer. Because there's a deficiency within their dua. That when they seek repentance, it's just mere words. They don't act, they don't act upon them. <coughs> and we as Muslims are who? We're people of action. We're not people who just merely talk. The Prophet والسلام, so many occasions, he would act upon his own sunnah before he would tell people to do it. Allah. People, we're people of action. We must constantly strive to seek repentance. We must constantly strive to do good. Because good doesn't come easy. You know, I like, like to say, you know, the hard things in life. You know, the hard things in life are staying, are staying true to the path. Are staying true to heart. You know, the evil things, the things that are wrong, they're much cheaper. You know, the evil things are much cheaper. They're easier to fall into that trap. To do good and to do right is harder and is far more expensive. And we have to seek that path. And we have to make sure we stay upon that path. And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves to keep forgiving you. And He'll keep forgiving you. And you know, there's a hadith report by Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Rasul radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Um, it's, it's a beautiful narration. And I love this and it, it, it kind of contextualizes things for you. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Masood reports from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in a hadith mentioned by Imam Bukhari in his Sahih that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so happy and is so much happy in terms of the repentance of his abd, his slave. Now listen to this attentively my dear brothers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so happy when his abd, his servant turns to him in repentance and he's more happier than that individual who is on a journey. Now imagine an individual who's on a journey and he stops in this barren land in the middle of nowhere in the desert and all he has with him is his ride, his caravan, his camel, his horse and upon that camel, upon that camel or upon that horse he has all his provisions. He has his food, he has his clothes, he has his water. Everything that he needs to survive is, is on that, that mount. And then he is in the middle of this desert, he's in the middle of nowhere and he goes to sleep. Sleep overcomes him. And when he wakes up, he looks and his mount is gone. There's nothing left. And then he begins to feel afraid. I have to, frantically he begins to look for, for his mount. And he searches the north, the east, the south, the west. He searches everywhere. 
and he can't find it. And then he begins to lose hope in ever finding that again. And he decides that he's going to go back to the place that he was, you know, he was initially, at the beginning he was resting in. So he goes back to that place. And he says, I'm going to go back and die now. Because everything is gone. There's no way I can't survive without the food, the water. What am I going to do? And he comes back to that place to die. And his sleep overcomes him again. And then he wakes up. And when he wakes up, his monk is there. His provisions are there. His food is there. His water is there. His clothes are there. Everything's there for him. Now imagine how happy that individual must be when he loses all hope. When all hope is lost. And then suddenly, it is as if he's been granted a second life. And that's how we must feel. That's how we're feeling. If you were in that position, wouldn't you feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you a second life? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his slave far more than that individual loves that camel when he finds it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it when you turn to him so much more than that individual when he finds his camel. How pleased do you think he must be? How happy do you think he is? Extremely happy. You can't put a price upon his happiness. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa telling us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far more happy with you when you turn to him. Allah. Look at that. We keep committing sins. We keep indulging in evil and wrongdoing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, keep turning to me. Keep turning to me. I'm going to keep forgiving you. Keep turning to me. And this is what we have to understand. So these are the four basic principles. You have to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Yeah? You have to believe that He's forgiving and you have to hope for His mercy. Second thing, you have to make sure you pinpoint the source of your sin. Why you're committing that sin. How you're committing that sin. Those things that potentially lead to your sin. The third thing, we have to now stop. Stop committing that sin and seek repentance and seek it sincerely. Tawbat al That we say we're never ever going to go back to that sin ever again. And then the fourth thing, we exert all our efforts. This is jihad in nafs. This is jihad against your own soul. Yeah? That you exert every single atom of your existence to make sure that you never tread that path again. And when you do that, then alhamdulillah, no. Ata'abu min al the one who seeks repentance is like that individual who has no sins. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely forgive you. I'm just going to take one or two minutes of your, of your time uh, to, to, to mention one hadith to you about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This hadith is mentioned in Bukhari also. The reason why I choose this hadith is because it tells you how far we have come in terms of our own khataya, in terms of our own sins. And it gives you two people. In the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talks about two people. <coughs> and it's easy for us to decide which one of those individuals we are. Yeah? It's easy for us to put ourselves in either one of those categories. And I leave that decision up to you. To believe what category that you are in. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A believer, a true mu'min, he sees his sins as if he was sitting on a mountain. And he's afraid that that mountain will fall on top of him. That's how he sees his sins. That's how regretful he is. That a true mu'min sees his sins as if he were sitting on a mountain and he feels that that mountain is going to fall down, come crashing down on top of his head. That's how afraid he is. So he lives in li his life in constant fear of that mountain crashing down upon his head. However, the wicked individual, the evil person, who's indulged his entire life in sin. He sees his sins as a fly that lands on his nose and he just flicks it away, you know, without no care in the world. That's how his sins are. So they come and they go and he just flicks them away. SubhanAllah, when the, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we hear that the Prophet Alaihi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Jawami and Kalim. The Prophet Alaihi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was concise and yet comprehensive in meaning. His words, وَمَا يُنْتِقُ عَلِي الْحَوَى The Quran says. And the Prophet ﷺ, he does not speak of his own desire. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحِيُّهَا Except that it is a revelation 
a wahi revealed to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at these, this beautiful narration. Now we know which one of those individuals we are. How we indulge in sin so much that when we sin, we don't even know that we're sinning. So much so that we don't even believe we're sinning anymore. I met an individual who drinks alcohol. And he used to drink alcohol. May Allah forgive him for his sin. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him the ability to overcome that addiction. I mean, this individual, he drank alcohol so much that he began to feel that it's not a sin anymore. And when that happens to you, then know that you're from those wicked individuals who sees his sin as a fly that sits on top of his nose and he just brushes his hands over it yeah, and makes it go away and thinks it's going to go away. And yet that fly keeps coming back. Or are we from those individuals or from that? Are we part of that group or that gathering that we are see our sins like a mountain always on top of our head, fearful that at any moment this mountain is going to come crashing down upon our head. That's the individual that we need to be. Our sins, that's how we need to feel each and every one of us. And I say that to myself before I say it to you. Let's make ourselves from that gathering, yeah? from that group of people. The last comment that I'm going to make before I leave, and I did say I'm going to finish on time, but you know, that hardly ever happened. So I, I went back on my word again that I was supposed to finish at a half past. Khair, the last thing is that you know in terms of repentance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we, we've established that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He forgives all sins. He forgives us no matter how. If our sins reach the sky, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us. But there's something that, you know, I'm sure most of you have come across quite recently. And you know, most of you are on social media and Facebook and Twitter and, and other things. You know, this, this culture now that is coming of exposing the sins of people. You know, exposing their sins. And this is something that we have to refrain from. You know, if you cover somebody's sins or if you cover somebody's wrongdoing, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover yours on Yom al oh. Don't we wish that on that day, those sins that we did in private, you know, when nobody knew of, of those sins except oh. us, don't we want that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and put satan over us on that day and He does not reveal them? You know, we all desire that. And if you want that, then cover other people's faults. Have husnudan. Have the best opinion about people. And in regards to the ulama, yeah, or who, those people who you see as shuyukh and, and those people who you see as awliya or friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those people who you see as honorable shuyukh, if they commit sins, then know that they do commit sins, they're not infallible. Your ulama, let me burst that bubble for you as well. Your ulama, your scholars, your shuyukhs, your peers, they're not infallible. They do commit sin. They do. You know, the difference between us and those people are that when they commit sins, they're from amongst those people who see their sins as a mountain on top of their head. You know? That is going to fall down upon them any moment, so they constantly need to do out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for that forgiveness. So if there are ulama or scholars who have done something wrong, yeah, who have committed sins, then do dua for those people instead of exposing their sins. Pray for them every week when you come to the gathering of hope. Pray for every single individual who's committed sins that week, including yourself. You know, a selfish dua is the one that is made for oneself. A man, a Bedouin came to the mosque of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he says that, Oh Allah, he came into the mosque and he said, Oh Allah, forgive me and Muhammad, have mercy upon me and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and nobody else. He said, oh, Ya Allah, forgive me and the Prophet Alaihi Sallallahu Wasallam and nobody else. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to him and said, No, don't make that dua. May Allah forgive you. May Allah forgive me and everybody else. That's the dua that we need to make. That's not a selfish dua. That's our dua that we need to make. Whenever we seek repentance, we seek repentance for ourselves. We seek forgiveness for our families. We seek forgiveness for our loved ones. We seek repentance and forgiveness for each and every individual of the Muslim Ummah, those of whom you haven't even met. Still seek repentance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives them. 
and, and gives them the ability to do tawbah and turn towards him. Uh, I'm going to finish with that. Uh, you know, again, I'd like to thank uh, the brothers for inviting me to give that Imam Sahib sitting, chilling out, relaxing in, in, in Medina. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give those brothers, those honorable, blessed brothers of ours who have, who have traveled with him, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give, give them a safe journey back inshallah. That's our dua for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable each and every one of us to act upon the teachings of the Quran, the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and give us the true ability to seek true, sincere repentance. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins. Wa akhiru ta'awana. Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah, say Subhanallah. Subhanallah. What a beautiful reminder by the Sheikh.